I'm gonna. S good, good evening, everybody. Hi. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. As folks are coming into into the Zoom session, I'll introduce myself and say hello, and we'll just get right into it. We have about an hour tonight to launch into a fantastic topic that you all are really excited about. We're going to talk about the WSDA infrastructure grant and have a chance to share some local and regional resources that can help you as a farmer apply and support your support your application for the grant. And also we're going to hear from a, a fantastic group of farmers who have received the grant and can share their wisdom and experience with you all. So my name is Kelly Henwood. And for those of you who don't know me, I am the Regional Small Farms Coordinator for Washington State University Extension. I serve Clallam, Jefferson, and Kitsap County, and I'm based in Jefferson County. So the, the resource providers we'll be talking about tonight will, will uh, be related to that geographic region. And please, um, a couple of Zoom tips. Keep, uh, stay on mute if you can. Just helps the background noise uh, be minimal. Feel free to turn on your video so we can all see each other in the room tonight. And utilize the chat box. So tonight at the, we're going to have lots of questions. We're going to go through a lot of, um, a lot of things that will be shared tonight. So if you have particular questions that you want addressed tonight, go ahead and put it in the chat right away, and we'll monitor the chat and make sure that your questions can get answered if they're not addressed in the forum for the remaining time. Um, also, it would be great to hear where everyone's coming from. So go ahead and put in the chat just where you're tuning in from tonight, just to see who's all in the room together. Um, I am going to, oh, you can use one more Zoom, Zoom uh, tip. If you need captions, there's closed captioning in, um, available to you all at your, in your Zoom screen at the bottom or the side, wherever your control panel is, folks can utilize that if you have a hard time um, hearing the audio tonight. So we're just gonna start off and introduce our resource providers who are here tonight. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over to one of our resource providers, and then we will jump into some farmer discussion. We have some pre-prepared questions for our farmers, and we'll just kind of go back and forth and have um, a loose forum format tonight. But again, put your questions in the chat. Um, Elise, do you want to introduce our resource providers? Yeah, for sure. Um, so hi, I'm Elise Wright. I am with North Olympic Development Council. Uh, we serve Jefferson and Clallam counties, and I am based in Jefferson. Um, so as Kelly said, we've got a number of uh, folks joining us from across the Tri-County region, um, and they all have um, they have a number of roles, wear many hats, um, and we're excited to have them here to uh, speak specifically to how they can help out with this grant. Um, so we've got folks from the Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship, um, Chrissy Kissler from Finn River and also Roots of Resilience. Um, I'm gonna let them all introduce themselves. Um, we also have another member of NODC here. Um, we've got a couple folks from the WSDA Regional Markets, people from WSU Extension, as you know, um, and also the Kids Up Conservation District. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it uh, to Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship. If you wanna unmute and introduce yourself as a representative. Oh, no way. Yeah, I'm Rick Dickinson. I'm the program director for CIE. Uh, and both I and my colleague, Micah Jonnet serve clients in Jefferson and Clallam counties. And we can be available for everything from getting started with business license, EIN, uh, getting your UEI, which you'll need for, for this grant, um, budget development, um, narrative development, and package review. And if you are in Kitsap County, I can also do a warm handoff to the SBDC advisors there, Joyce Oswald and Melissa Tano, because we are a part of the SBDC as well. Great. 
Um, I'll pass it to Christy. Um, she's wearing kind of two hats tonight, um, but I'll let her introduce herself. Uh, hey, everyone. Yeah, Christy Kissler and um, a recipient of the grant uh, this last year through the Chimicum uh, Valley Granary, actually, and then working on um, local kind of agricultural uh, organizing and advocacy through Roots of Resilience. So um, able to really support, I think, kind of concept development and uh, narrative review of, of uh, grant applications. Thanks. Let's see. Um... I'm Elise, again, I said with NODC, so we um, happy to, you know, take a look, uh, narrative editing, basic, uh, the UEI application, anything like that, navigating the application process, um, any support in that, um, and I'll pass it, my colleague is in here somewhere, Mark, if you want to introduce. Hello, everyone, um, glad you're all here, this is uh, great to see so many folks uh, getting together and really thinking about these grant opportunities. Uh, my name is Mark Bowman, and I co-work with Elise at NODC as we uh, run and manage the Sustainable Agricultural Coordinator coordination position, working with farmers in the two counties, helping them overcome hurdles to growth. So um, reach out to us if you feel that you have uh, uh, gaps in your, in your uh, farming and operating system and that we can help, help you uh, find resources and overcome. Um, and then uh, we should have representatives from WSDA regional markets in here. Um, I don't know where you are, if you can unmute and introduce yourself. Hi, sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Raymond. I lead the regional markets program at Washington State Department of Ag. Thank you, Christy. Um, there was a little excitement there. Um, we are offer we do a lot of different things to try to support support um, local food systems and small scale and direct marketing farms around the state with um, regulatory guidance and market access and more recently grants, including the local food infrastructure grant. And so I'm here um, with my colleague, Misha Eid, who can also introduce herself in a moment, but we're mostly here just to help provide any clarifying information that we can and um, support, uh, be supportive, be a supportive presence as you think about um, possibly applying. Hi, as Laura said, my name is Misha Eid, and I'm the Small Farm Direct Marketing Specialist um, in the Regional Markets Program, working directly with Laura. <clears throat> and I mostly um, act as sort of a, a connector and somebody farmers can come to with questions around regulatory interpretation, um, access to resources. I'm not working on the grant program directly, but um, that is part of our team's offerings. And I am very available to support farmers as they work on their businesses. Great, uh, WSU Extension folks. Kelly, if you wanna reintroduce yourself, I don't know. <laughs> um, sure, yeah, WSU Extension is one hat I wear with our regional small farms program. Um, we offer quite a bit of resources, but specific to this grant, um, you're all participating in one of the ways in which we support farmers by coming to these educational sessions. We try to conve help convene these conversations and really just connect farmers to the resources they need. So if, if we don't have it, we can try to find it for you. Um, as far as this grant application at this time, we're not able to do... Um, specific feedback on your application, but if you just needed a quick set of eyes to look over any particular section of your application, um, we could offer that as a as a bare minimum. But we're happy to support you to those to those support you and connect you to those resources. Um, Amit. Yeah, I I hi everyone. I'm Amit. I'm the WSC Extension Director for the Jefferson County. And uh, again, as Kelly said, any connection that you need in terms of any open question for you, we'll be happy to connect you to the relevant entity, organization, individual, and, and we can play that role. Also, uh, if there is a quick review that you need of the application in terms of anything that you need specific feedback on, either we can provide it or we can connect you to, uh, to someone who can be more useful. Great. Um, and then I'm going to wrap up with uh, Diane Fish from the Kitsap Conservation District. And this is strategic because this is going to be a nice segue. Um, 
she has experience um, helping farms apply for this grant last year um, and is doing the same again this year and also sat on the grant review panel. So Diane, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Diane Fish. I'm a resource planner at Kitsap Conservation District and I support small farms with technical assistance for business planning and farm succession planning. And specifically for this grant, I can offer all aspects of support for your grant application, including narrative review, budget development, and any questions that you might have specific to KIPSEP about the regulatory framework. Great. And um, Kelly, did you want to? Yeah, say I did want to add another resource or two that came up in the discussion. Um, Rick Dickinson. Yep. And I see Kelly's waving. Um, Rick mentioned the SBDC. And for those who are not um, familiar with that organization, that's the Small Business Development Center. And there are SBDC offices throughout Washington state. So um, we can we can um, collect and summarize all these resources for you and send out if it's too many things all at once. So um, you don't you don't have to like, you know, write really fast, but they're another great business center resource. And then we also have someone from the Team Jefferson EDC, Kelly Bloom. I don't know if you wanted to say hello and introduce yourself, Kelly. Hi, sorry, I have a new uh, laptop. Uh, my name is Kelly Bloom and I'm new to Team Jefferson. And Cindy asked me to participate tonight to let everyone know about the resources that we have available to help with business planning. Um, they offer classes. Uh, if anyone has heard of Douglas Hamill, he works with us at EDC. And so he's a great resource and offered to help with grant applications, business planning. And then I myself um, have been helping several of my clients. I have an accounting and bookkeeping background, just going through with their budgets and talking out project ideas. So Team Jefferson is available to help network with resources as well. Awesome. All right, do we have any other uh, resource providers that we missed before we move on to our farmers? Nope, okay. Well, um, yes, great segue into our forum. Thank you so much. And again, I'll summarize this information for you all. So if you registered, you'll receive some follow-up info from us. But just for a show of hands, it'd be kind of interesting. You could use the emoji or reaction buttons or um, put yourself on, let it see your face, but it'd be interesting to see who, if you feel like providing this information or identifying who's applying for the grant this round. Raise your hand or do an emoji reaction if you'd like to self-identify yourself. Just, just curious, more out of curiosity. All right, so it looks like maybe almost half or a quarter. Okay. Awesome. That's great. That's fantastic. Hope oh, I can't find the emoji. Yep. That's okay. Um, this is fantastic. And if you're not ready for this round, it sounds like there will be more opportunities to apply to this, this grant fund. Um, I want to reiterate that the WSCA has fantastic resources and opportunities to pop into one of their Q and A office hours. I tried to incorporate all of those opportunities in all the communications around this this night. Take advantage of those office hours. We've heard really fantastic feedback from them. Some people have their grant application open when they're attending an office hour and working on it as they're as they're uh, carving out the time for that. Um, there's also pre-recorded, already recorded webinar about the grant. So tonight we're not really going to talk about some of those details about the grant unless it's related to um, uh, tips or um, content from the, the farmer speakers. So just wanted to clear that, but you do have WCA folks who are here tonight that can maybe answer any questions, but really the floor tonight is to connect farmers to each other and resource providers. Okay, with that said, let's move into our um, farmer forum. And I'd like to try and pin our farmers 
Um, tonight we have Betsy Wharton, we have Cass Curl, we have Christy Kistler, and we have Meg Depew. Um, Diane, did I miss any Kitsap farmers who are here tonight? No? I don't believe so. Okay. I, okay. I, I think you, you got everybody. Okay, sounds good. So um, while I try to find everyone's faces and pin them so you all can see our farmer guest speakers, I'm going to kick off with uh, the first question. And farmers, you can feel free to just unmute. This can be conversational, or if you'd like me to call on you, I can, but I really just want you all to have the floor. Um, and again, a reminder for folks that you can ask questions in the chat. We'll moderate it if, if it's appropriate to interrupt the farmers and ask. We'll do that, but we'll try to get your questions answered. So really, <clears throat> let's start with the first question, which is, which resources did you use for your application and which did you find to be the most helpful for you? So Christy, since I pinned you first, why don't you um, you kick that kick that off? Um, <clears throat> Kelly, do you mean when you say resources, you mean of the kinds of resources that got shared here? Any any so. resource. It doesn't have to be shared mm. here. Um, any resources that helped you, if at all, in this grant. Right. Um, well, we definitely attended the um, WSDA info session, uh, maybe multiple um, ones. Um, <clears throat> we um, early on identified um, that we were going to need some um, support with the financial management. So we we aligned with a person um, that could help us do that piece of it and uh, worked with her to kind of develop our, our budgets. Um, and then I think uh, when it came to getting letters of support for the grant, um, kind of thinking about the regional network of people involved in food system was really helpful. Um, and then I had several um, kind of friends and allies uh, review our our drafts to um, help us sort of see it from different angles. So those are the main resources we used. That's great. Um, also, I realized we we skipped over introduction. So as you, as, why don't we go down the list of our farmers, introduce yourself, my apologies, getting over head cold, um, introduce yourself, your farm name or your business name, and um, and then we can jump back into the question. So Betsy Wharton, do you want to unmute and introduce yourself, please? Sure. Um, hi, my name is uh, Betsy Wharton. I'm in Port Angeles, and my business name is the Maple Street Kitchen, and I don't primarily call myself a farmer. Um, my project is to really um, sort of manage and own a shared commercial kitchen space, and my background is that I had a, a business called the Clallam Canning Company for almost a decade, making pickles and sauerkrauts here in Port Angeles, and I had closed it for a little while, got a day job, thought I was done with it um, until this grant came along last year. And so I was able to fund an expansion of my very small commercial kitchen to include, most importantly, a, a public bathroom and a little bit more space so that now the kitchen can be used by other people who are doing value added in the community. Um, so that's a little bit about me and um, the resources that I used. Um, I, I did rely on WSU Extension a little bit. They had um, conducted a study that sort of um, justified the need for kitchen space in the community. And I was able to grab out a little bit of um, data from that study. Um, and I, I have looked at this year's application and it doesn't even have some of the same questions that we had to answer last year. It's a little different. Um, and I should have raised my hand. I am actually planning to apply again this year, um, partly because last year's funding, I got um, part of what I asked for and it didn't ref um, include any of the refrigeration space that I had requested. Um, and so I feel like I'm, I, I'm just going to see if I can't finish out the project and apply for a small, rapid and ready project this year. That's great. Thanks for sharing which resources you use. And I'm so glad you plugged that study. I should add on our um, in the chat the link to 
that WC extension feasibility study and summary. It's, it lives on our website, but I'd be happy to put mm -hmm. it in the chat for reference. That's great. Yeah. Love that. Thanks, Betsy. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Meg Depew. Meg, want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself and your farm and what resources did you did you utilize, if any? Yeah, hi. So uh, my name is Meg Depew, and I'm with the Squim Bee Farm. Um, and we're a small apiary out here in, in Clallam County. Um, you know, I used uh, the WSDA question and answer sessions very heavily, and I, I found those pretty supportive. And I kind of went blind into the application process, hoping for the best, and was lucky enough and honored enough to be awarded for our project. Um, I want to shout out to Mark Bowman because he did give us a lot of support along the way through this process. Um, we are, you know, we, we are developing the, the farm in a commercial kitchen in our processing honey house. Um, we work with a lot of the lavender farms down in this Wim Dungeness area. And we've done some interesting uh, projects coordinating um, with the bees on those um, farms. And at a lot of the points, some of those farmers have taken over their own beekeeping and now we're working in a um, support capacity for them, allowing our equipment for uh, processing and extraction and uh, the education of growing the beekeeping in Clallam County. That's incredible. Thanks, Meg. Cass, I I I pinned Nile Zoom. Is that the best? <laughs> yeah, we're sharing the yeah. connection. Um, right. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Cass Curl, uh, lesser half of Space Twins Provisions, which operates at White Lotus Farm. Um. We received us a, a grant last year for a walk-in cooler at the farm. And it was like the, whatever, there was like a bigger tier and a smaller tier. We were in the smaller tier, which uh, we didn't really rely on a ton of resources for that, <clears throat> um, like to get the application through. Um, because yeah, we kind of went into it blind like Meg and I feel like, you know, something like with the granary, that's like a much more complicated and larger, uh, project, which I definitely would have leaned on help for, but, uh, found the lower kind of budget zone to be fairly straightforward to apply. That's great. Um, yeah. So on that, let's move to the next question. So what do you wish you had known or had access to resource wise when you were applying, if, if any at all? So you've been through this application process, you've been through it all. What do you wish you had known or had access to when you were applying? Is this for me to answer? And I'll go yeah, back. Go, go ahead and we'll just go around. Yeah, we'll, and farmers feel free to just um, unmute and jump in. Okay. Um, it was helpful to like see afterward, like how many farms got grants and like what scale you could, you could like envision for, I would say that like, so I thought it was cool that that they made available like the grants that got awarded and how much they got. Um, yeah, I guess leaning on the people that are in the room, like I don't think my wife Jules or I were really aware of how much we could leverage people that we know in the local community who are like specialized in this sort of thing. Um, yeah. Other farmers. Mm 
I can't really think of anything that I wish that I had known, um, except perhaps they, um, they require that you get an essay number from the federal government that I found to be really difficult to accomplish. And at the end of the day, it, it didn't seem important or necessary. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to work through that system. And, and then it just didn't seem to matter. And I think it's required again. I see, Christy, that you're shaking your head. It's the SAM. That's it, right? The, the SAM. SAM. Number. Yeah, 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 yeah. The SAM number. I, it's just, it was impossible to get it. And then it, and then it was like, fine. I never did get a SAM number. Oh, you did it. I was, yeah, I was telling others that it almost, mm -mm. almost lost me in this. I almost was defeated. But Cass, did you have to get a SAM number and was it hard to do? I don't know. Jules mostly did the application part. <laughs> but actually, I'm sorry. I don't want to be discouraging to everybody. It's just a formality. It um, is. And oh, and look at this. Look at this in the tab. It's in the chat. In the orientation, they said the SAM number would only be needed for meat processing applicants. Laura, do you think that's right? That the SAM number is not required for everybody? Yeah, I think because that's a federal USDA kind of facility, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. You, it would be yeah. great. Should, you yeah. should have a UEI number. Um, you, there's a way to get a number without doing a full registration. And we need that for tracking whether it's um, it's absolutely required for federal dollars. Um, and in this case, the um, some of the projects will be funded with federal dollars. But in general, that is a key due diligence um, requirement that we have for our fiscal due diligence with with just public money and that is the way to track um, or is somehow like not um, in a position to be funded um, it's also a way to a business is being bonded to do the exact same thing from different grants. So it's just a way of, um, it's just a due diligence um, risk management piece that we're required as a, as a public entity using public dollars to kind of check. Yeah, I think I got a UEI. I just couldn't get the SAM. It just, I kept submitting documents and they were rejecting them. It was, it was like some kind of a technical glitch situation, but Thanks for sharing that, you two. Um, Meg, but the question- Yeah, I think we're in this. No, I was gonna say, we're, we were kind of in the same situation as Betsy. We ended up getting the UEI, but I had to literally be held by the hand and walked through the process. It was so cumbersome and um, non-intuitive to, to get through it, but eventually we did. Were there other resources um, that you wish you had known or had access to otherwise? I mean, which hand held you through it? I mean, <laughs> I wish I could remember the entity, but it was through Kitsap County, and I believe it was their, through their small business group. And I can't give the names of the, the people who did help me, and I apologize for that. That was a year ago. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Laura, do you see um this question in the chat about can they get the UEI after the award? I'm I'm guessing not. It seems like it was, you know, a pre before a contract is yeah, it's a requirement or before a contract is in place. Oh, so it's you. They could get it after they got the grant award. I mean, you should if you're thinking of applying, you should start working on getting your SAM UEI now. I think it, it does take time. It's complicated. It's a, it is a federal system. We wish it were easier. We've tried to create some guidance um, to help, but um, it does take a little time. And so we wanted to provide um, leeway so that it's not holding up your submission of your application. Um, but I, that, that's a, that's a tip. Start that now. Great tip. That's great. Uh, Kelly, uh, maybe this is in one of your future questions, but um, everybody who's received the grant, 
has had to work through this um, process of having the, the funding lined up and then getting prepared for the reimbursement process. And so um, I think figuring out how to help resource people for that piece of it, um, I'm sure that everybody on, on the call here who got it did some combination of beg, borrow, and steal, you know, to get that together so they could do the reimbursement depending on the amount of their grant. But um, I was kidding about steal. Nobody stole anything, Laura, I'm sure of it. Um, but yeah, what are the resources, for example, in, in like a local investment network that had the sort of guarantee uh, backed up by some of the agencies represented here um, to help it encourage some kind of upfront funding? Yeah, let's dive into that. Let's dive into the upfront funding piece. Um, no particular questions around that, but I'd, if if these farmers are willing to share any insight into um, that process and that experience for you, any tips and um, reflections on that would be awesome to dive into. Let's dive into that. Betsy, you, you un- Oh, um. Yeah, I mean, I my project was about fifty thousand dollars, and it was a construction project, so it probably spanned four to five months, maybe. And I self funded along the way, and I found the reimbursement um, process to be really pretty user friendly. And I submitted as soon as I could. I probably submitted four or five different invoices and was reimbursed within a couple of weeks each time so that I didn't have to have the full amount on hand. It, it worked out actually pretty well. I was a bit nervous about it, but I felt really good about the, it was just straightforward, you know, it's just keep your receipts, you know, submit the project, describe the steps along the way and the, and the reimbursement checks really rolled through. So it, it um that was pretty helpful because I, I didn't have the whole amount available, but it, it worked out because the funding came through. I would also just make a um, general plug. There's a lending club in Clallam County called Local Dollars that has um, the last last year, their members decided that they would be happy to um, fund upfront fund the, people who needed that kind of um, cash on hand to move through this process. So you'd have to talk to them and probably show them what your project is, but that's a, um, a possibility if, if you want to get cash that way. And uh, I can dig up Karen Westwood is the person to talk to. Actually, you could talk to me. I'm a member of it myself. Um, if funding is an issue, mostly Clallam County. Yeah, that would be great if any other resource providers could find that info and put in the chat while we're in the forum, the local dollars and cents, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. And then similarly, it'd be great to hear um, Diane from Kitsap County, Diane Fish, if there's um, any comments or, or thoughts you have around how Kitsap farmers have accessed or done some upfront funding. I know that there's some efforts there. Anyway, um, one of the things that, and I've had several conversations with folks, is that um, Steward will offer uh, bridge loans, but there's a lot of um, conventional lenders that when you talk to them about that, they just kind of look at you like you have a screwed eye in the middle of your forehead. So a lot of our farmers either relied on family money or um, they, one advice that I give farmers is that as they're thinking about their project, if they do it in stages, so that they can apply for reimbursement when they finish one stage. That way they don't, you know, if they, if they receive $50,000 to do a thing, they don't have to expend that full 50,000. They might do 10,000 on the first part and 15,000 on the second and the bulk on the third so that they don't have to, they can manage their cash flow just a little bit. But um, it sounds like the Jefferson Clallam Local Lending Network is genius. Also, if you have, um, if you run a CSA or if you're doing anything that where you have a large social network, sometimes just leveraging funding that way. I know several farmers who, um, for similar reimbursement loans, have done that.
That's great. Thanks, Diane. And folks, feel free to use the chat if you have. I'd love to hear from other farmers if they're willing to share creative ideas around um, this piece of the grant. Uh, it's a reimbursement grant, so you have to have some funds up front. And other resource providers, feel free to put in some resources there. But Jeff, uh, Christy made a great point. Jefferson County has the LION, the Local Investment Opportunity Network, that is housed at Team Jefferson. Um, and I don't know, Christy, if you want to share more about the impact that they've had in the ag community, but share some of your thoughts around if they have um, awareness around this need or have been asked or approached or. Did any of the Jefferson County farmers on here go to line with this? Because we didn't, but I'm just realizing that someone should um, clue them in to this whole uh, amazing opportunity of this grant and see if they can get some lenders, po po you know, kind of poised to back up any farmers who get it. Cause that would really be a relief. I think for a lot of folks who are applying for this um, to, to know that there's a source of these kind of funds. Uh, I'll, I'll available. Chime, oh, sorry. I'll chime in and say that we're sort of a preferred provider for lion um, helping people go through their application process and then develop their pitch deck to present. Um, and so we're happy to help with that process. I have not actually gotten any funding for a farm client through them yet, but I've had uh, other clients get funding. So happy to help with that. Any other comments on the reimbursement piece? I'd just love to hear about other, other farmers, just how, we have heard from individual farmers who have shared with us um, who aren't on the call. They didn't have the best um, experience with the reimbursement process or it, it was cumbersome um, in some ways and not in other ways. I know every farm is different, every project is different, but it would be great to hear just a little bit more experience from you all. Um, what were your mistakes? <laughs> or also what would you do differently this time around with the reimbursement part. And you all can stay unmuted if you'd like, it's easy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, the main feedback that I, I would give as doing a smaller scale project, like the funding, basically we just maxed out our business credit card and that was enough because of the scale of the project. Like, I don't think Finn River could put a half a million on their credit card, you know. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> the thing that tied us up was just supply chain. Like, we waited because we were too busy in the spring to build the project. And so we ordered the walk-in cooler and it took like way longer to show up than we thought it would and then it was such an oversized load that the shipping company wouldn't deliver it to the farm mm -hmm. and I had to actually bring my truck and Niles trailer and like go to a shipping bay in Tacoma and get my product <laughs> so I could finish it in time to like get reimbursed it was kind of stressful mid-season um, so that's my advice is like, do your, buy your stuff well in advance, because you also have to demonstrate that you completed the project, or at least we did in order. So we had to like, take a picture of the pallet, like on hand at the farm. Um, that was my big thing. But then once we did have all the necessary things to get reimbursed we got reimbursed really quickly so and it was it covered the whole amount of the project which was awesome because we've gotten another grant in the past and it was cool but it only funded like half the project so I will say that that was pretty awesome yeah, I can follow up on that because uh, it actually wasn't Finn River Cast; it was the granary that got the that got the big one. And for those of yeah. you who are those of you who are wondering, should we do the little one or the big one? Um, 
Keith and I sat down and sort of mapped out, you know, what would, what would this, what could this be? What would you need, you know, for this to really be as sort of awesome as we, you know, wanted it to be. And, and we sort of took that gamble on the larger um, grant and it felt like, um, <laughs> you know, to, it, it, it felt like an impossibility, honestly, that it would happen. So the fact that we got the large one um, was a surprise and a, obviously a sort of miraculous delight. And it meant a lot of complex financial management and um, kind of high, pretty high stakes turnaround uh, in terms of making sure that we had enough funding on hand um, to sort of complete the complexity of steps that we had in terms of equipment orders and um, contractors and so on. So yeah, I think that depending um, on the complexity of your project and the size of your grant, um, just having some exceedingly um, uh, kind of well-organized timelines and then building in buffers, <laughs> like you were saying, Kaz, like really building in buffers and maybe even having a backup plan. We had to go uh, at several times just because of a delay in the reimbursement, either because we submitted it incorrectly or there was some other holdup. Um, we had to sort of um, go into sort of pretty high stress scramble mode to- Okay, um, I'm muted again make some of those things happen. So anyway. Thanks, Christy. Yep. Meg, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I think we had a real learning curve on this and we ended up having a lot of stress along the way. Um, yeah, initially we didn't have alternative sources to help us with the upfront funding. And so we also maxed out the credit cards um, and then what we found is I would submit things online and everything looked like it was fine. And we would wait four or more weeks, not hear anything. I go back to look and some of the receipts that I would paste in had just disappeared. Um, and Galen was really helpful whenever I would call him, um, but then I'd have to go through with again, resubmitting and waiting, um, so we ended up having probably eight weeks between every time we submitted to when we were able to then be reimbursed. And then that would move us on to the following uh, step in the project. So I would recommend if anybody does this, that you can go back in once you've submitted everything, I'd wait a day or two, go back in and make sure that everything is the way that it was supposed to be. Um, part of the difficulty, I think, was that when it was not moved forward, we were left in the dark about it. I had to wait those four weeks before I went back to see what the what the problem is. I don't know why I haven't gotten um, my reimbursement yet. So in, in some ways, um, I'm wondering if the communication could have been a little bit easier or more forward. I mean, it's, I'm sure Laura's nodding her head here. I mean, I I, th I think this was the first time they did this grant. Is that right, Laura? So I'm guessing there was a pretty big learning curve back at WSDA and um, I empathize with what you're saying. And also when we kind of leaned on WSDA to sort of help us through, um, they, they completely came through ultimately. So I really appreciate everything WSDA learned last year, I think about this program, I'm guessing it's gonna be a little more fluid next time around. I certainly hope so. And that's very gracious of you. I mean, we know that a reimbursement style grant is really challenging. If we could change anything, we'd love to change that, but we are, we can't, that is something we can't change. Um, but what we are trying to do is develop our system so that there's more of that communication, Meg, so like you pointed out, so that you know when something is amiss and can take action sooner than um, later. We all can take action sooner than later. And I do think that even in the absolute best case scenario, um, it's wise to be thinking about cash flow as you're developing your, your proposal and your plan um, because it, it could take, it likely would take up to four weeks, absolute best case scenario for um, funding for a reimbursement to be made. Um, 
and it's rare that it moves that smoothly just simply because there's a lot of details and there's often a little bit of back and forth um, to make sure that all the reimbursement information that you're submitting is what our fiscal department is going to approve to reimburse against. And kind of that four week clock doesn't start ticking until we have all of that stuff in place. So even if we're all responding to like emails and tracking each other, like in the moment, it'll take some time. And we know that a lot of people were using a strategy of like paying for a little bit, getting the reimbursement and then paying for the next, which makes sense. But if you're thinking about doing that, I think it's important to um, make sure that your project timeline makes sense and allows for that. I think somebody else mentioned the value, the um, just supply chain challenges and sort of being aware that we do have supply chain challenges that are out of anybody's control. And so just sort of building that into your, to your project plan. Um, I, I included a link in there to the grant guidelines in the chat, which include the a more detailed evaluation criteria. And you'll note that a key portion of it is achievability. Um, so something that reviewers are looking at is, is this a reasonable project plan in the time proposed with the sort of skills and other things in place to make it um, possible? So that's something to think about as you're developing your plan. That's awesome. Thanks, Laura, for chiming in. Pass or uh, Betsy, was there any other comments on the reimbursement piece of it that you wanted to share before we move on to a couple other questions? Well, I I want to share a mistake that I made, and I'm not sure how I could have avoided it really, but because my project was a permitted construction project, and the timing is it's pretty tight timing. Um, I submitted my permit to the city of Port Angeles with the project that I had conceived based on the funding. Um, and we started the project, but as the permitting inspections rolled along, the city called for a few additional um, components like an extra back door and a grease trap, and we had to do some electrical work. And so the project ended up going over budget um, and we were in it, you know, I couldn't change my mind and decide that I couldn't afford it. We were right in the middle of it. And so, um, if, if you're doing a project that involves permitting and, you know, construction is just that way we were remodeling an old space. And so it's hard to factor in the unknown into your budget requests. You can't just have a slush fund in case of these kinds of things. So that was, that was a hard pill to swallow, but we did, we had to, cause we were in the middle of it. <clears throat> this is Mark Bowman. Hey, Betsy, he brings up a great point here is cost overruns. And are those covered by the project themselves? Um, and probably not. And just being able to prepare for slush funds to cover cost overruns. Uh, Christy, did you, I mean, is that a problem that you had with the granary? Um, so, um, you know, just being able to make sure that there, there might be costs and delays and things that happen, supply chain issues, uh, addi additional costs because of supply chain issues. How do you manage um, those cost overruns? And uh, maybe Laura can talk about it from the grants perspective. Um, are there any, is there a 10% uh, gap or anything to cover overruns or are those just out of the pocket of the producer and how do, how do we manage those? Mark, was that question directed to anyone in particular? I'm sorry, I missed the first part. Yeah, any anyone just, you know, dealing with those cost overruns. I mean, I can, I'm just, I was just checking with my husband. I was like, Did we have cost overruns? <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so what happened, um, you know, once your budget is approved, um, you can't really, ch you can't change it without getting a, a those changes approved by WSDA. So when we, as we were going along, when we noticed that one section of the it was sort of swelling, we then had to sort of modify the entire budget. So it's not that we were counting on additional funding. It's just that we had to, we had to 
change the budget so that something else we were going to do was going to be sort of um, adjusted downward. So there had to be some flexibility in terms of the entire budget so that we could account for that, uh, which it was something we discovered along the way. <laughs> so there's some things that didn't get done quite how we thought they would get done because something else had to happen uh, at a higher price tag. Do other farmers want to add to that? Great question. So let me just ask the, another part of the, the question is, so um, so I think Laura at WSDA, um, uh, can't, if you're doing your budget, is it kind of within the parameters of the budget itself? <clears throat> is it pretty, is it safe to over budget on some things knowing that there could be some cost overruns or we, we're in dealing in a time where we're dealing with supply shortages and inflation and some other issues? And is it okay at the end of the day to come in under budget? If you're if you over budget in your in your projections and your it's, actual coming in under yeah it's so it's okay to come in under budget <laughs> um uh let's see so i'll just re-emphasize what christy said is that there is flexibility within the budget a little bit um sort of between budget categories if something looks like it's becoming more expensive you know there's some leeway to shift between funds without pre-approval. It's minimal. If you're going to go above that, I think it's 20, don't quote me, but I believe it's 20% of a budget line item. You can shift. If if other bigger changes come up and you want to make an amendment, um, then you, you just talk to the grants program staff about that um, and can get a pre-approval to do that. Um, I think it is wise to be planning for inflation and cost um, changes in it as part of your planning of the project. Um, and then we just, additionally, I think people are asked to prioritize, to identify which are priority items as you're filling out the application budget. Um, and that is because we, if we are unable to fund projects fully, we really want to understand which components of the project are most important for you. Um, so that kind of, I don't know if that fully answers your question, Mark. And then if funding, if if people are going to be under budget, um, there are ways to, again, ask for a budget modification, perhaps to add an expense that maybe wasn't initially approved, but is very related to completion of the proposed project. Or in some cases, we just ask people to let us know as soon as possible if their projects weren't going to be funded because in general, this is a highly competitive grant. Um, so that's another reason why we're really encouraging people to apply when you're really ready. Um, it's going to be open again in the future. So it's really competitive. So you want to apply when you're ready. That's great. And Diane Fish added in the chat, budget amendment are, are easy peasy, but the, and the grants team responds to that, but don't wait till the last minute, which is great. Um, there's a fantastic question in the chat I want to get to before the remaining time. And now's the time to pop your questions in the chat or we'll open it up. If you have a question uh, for the farmers or any of the resource provi providers, but Mark and Rochelle asked that they hadn't even thought of letters of support and how important are those to the application and what's a good strategy for selecting writers? And Christy, thanks for uh, responding in the chat. But if if you all utilize letters of support in your application, I would love for you to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we did. I, I mean, there's a section at the bottom, um, at least on the big the big grants um, that allowed for a certain number of attachments. And I can't remember if it just said supporting documents or if it specifically asked for letters. Laura, do you recall? Letters of support aren't required or expected, okay. Uh, okay. but there are other ways, other questions in the grant that ask about um, kind of broader impact. And it's important to, that's a good place to explain um, partners. There's multiple questions that allow you to explain partnership relationships and other relationships in your community, relationships to other businesses, other farms. Um, that will be positively impacted. So it's really good to be as specific as possible there, um, but we're we're not requesting letters of support. 
you know, I, I will say for us, and I said this in the chat, you know, because we were asking for such a significant amount, it felt like we really needed and wanted um, to ensure that there was sort of external validation for the concept. And it, so it was helpful to get those letters. Diane, you raised your hand. Uh, to the issue of um, business relationships, I agree that you need to be very specific about that because one of the things the grant focuses on is interrelationships between um, larger portions of the uh, food system. And um, that is one of the things that you're being evaluated on. So if you say something, oh, we have general partnerships and don't specify like who you have business relationships with, it's really hard as a grant evaluator to say, well, do they really have like a, a business relationship with them or are they just like hoping that they have a business relationship with them? Um, the second thing I would say is that, and this is a strategy, is that as you prioritize what you want funding for, there is the ability for you to request, even if you, they can't fund your whole project to, fund, to partially fund it. And as a reviewer, you have the option of recommending for partial funding because they may have they may have a great concept but like you don't know if they can do the whole thing within the time allowed and so you can recommend partial funding and so if you prioritize like the things that you really really need and then things that you would like to have and then things that would be awesome but you know that provides the grant reviewers and it gives WSCA flexibility in making sure the funding gets to as many farmers as possible. That's awesome. Thanks, Diane. Other farmers um, want to respond to the letters of support question? I don't think that we got a letter of support because our project was small. Okay. Great. Well, I'm going to uh, remove our spotlights and um, we have time for another question or two. So if anyone from the gallery wants to, let's see, how do I move the spotlights? Um, there we go. If anyone wants to unmute and ask a question to any of the farmers, now's a great time. Um, or you can also utilize the chat. We just have a few more minutes left. Um, I have a question. I hope someone can answer. Uh, I'm Katie Jagger from Saltwater Seeds. We grow seeds in uh, Clallam and Jefferson counties. And we are in need of space to dry seeds down. Um, and we're hoping to buy a shed um, and some shelving and split it into two rooms, one for a seed a piece of seed cleaning equipment, a small piece of seed cleaning equipment, and one room for drying things down. And I'm wondering if we can put into that grant money to pay ourselves to divide that room, just to build a wall and a, frame out a door and insulate the whole thing, um, or if we need to hire a contractor to do that work. Was that question, can anyone answer that question off the top of their head or is that a specific question for the grants team? I'll jump in and say, I think that that's a good one for you to talk specifically with the grants team on simply because um, it's kind of a, that depends answer. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, it depends a little bit on how your business is structured and how those costs would be paid. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I will just hop in to say I watched, um, I think it was a, a FAQ session or something that Galen um, mediated, and he said, you know, as long as it's specific to the project, like if it, you, the ongoing operating costs are not eligible, right? So if it's, and again, I would still check with the grants team, but whether it's you or a contractor, as long as it's, you know, you, you can't get reimbursed for any funds um, before you are awarded a contract. And so, and if it is labor, you know, it has to be occurring in that project timeframe. So just knowing that. 
Awesome. Thanks so much. One more question before we wrap up for the night. Farmers, any last uh, pieces of wisdom? Um, I just want to jump in and say, Katie, I can follow up with you about how labor worked out in our but in our grant pro proposal because there is a, a place for it. But you're right; there's a certain way it has to happen. Great. Any others? Well, thank you for joining us. I know it was a quick session, but um, please feel free to reach out to any of the resource providers that were here tonight and others. If you don't want to wait for me to send out the summary of everyone, please feel free to put your contact in the chat, any of the resource providers. Um, and this will be recorded and it will be available to rewatch. And again, please review, uh, refer to the FAQs. Thanks. People are putting stuff in the chat that, that the WSDA is, is hosting. There's lots of great info there. Um, and again, if you if you need any particular resource, feel free to reach out to any of us and we can point you to the right person and best of luck. Any other lasting comments or closing comments from our pro other providers? Well, I just will say three cheers to WSDA for, you know, designing a grant program that so clearly meets this the, the, this need in the agri in the food system, you know, to to help farmers leverage um, what they're doing into the sort of next stage of regional resilience. It's an amazing program. Yeah, good luck, everybody. Three cheers to all of you that are feeding the people. Thank you for all that you do. Woohoo! All right, carry on. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank Thanks you very farmers. much. Adios. Thank you.